Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Jordan Kemper. I'm so excited that you guys are tuning into this webinar. My goal tonight is to just give some inspiration, some encouragement, some tips, and in, in hopes that you guys will reach some of your health and fitness goals. Just a little background on me. I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. I went to Wheaton College. I was there studying to become a medical doctor. Um, was introduced to uh, Dr. Steve Herschek, and he helped kind of reshift my focus. I took my exercise physiology degree and I, I built One Body International. So for the past eight years, it's been my privilege to just work with so many different clients, working with different individuals to help people reach their health and fitness goals. Had a chance to speak in about 12 different countries, um, the likes of Dr. Oz and John Maxwell and Tony Robbins, and it's just been so much fun for me to travel and inspire people. But tonight really isn't about me. It's about you, and it's about helping you reach your goals. So as we start getting into some of our content, I want to ask you guys a couple of questions. How many of you felt like there's some weight loss confusion in your life? I mean, goodness gracious, do we go fat-free, high protein, is, is, is blood type diet important, gastric, you know, a band, uh, do I need to, to go to my, my dietitian on a consistent basis, is exercise most important, what about sodium? I mean, what about those herbal wraps? Should I try that? You know, the juice diets, the lemon diets. I mean, it's just, there's so much craze out there. How do you filter through all of this information? Who's right? Who's wrong? My, my goal tonight, guys, is to just help you kind of sift through all of that information and get kind of a plan. Get something in your mind that's going to help you start with your own personal goals. And my hope is, is that you start with yourself. And then we can start with your immediate family, those closest to you, and we can start moving in the direction of, of better health. So we're going to sift through some of these, uh, these confusing points tonight. My encouragement to you guys is not to just sit back and listen to Jordan speak, but really engage by sitting up in your seat. Um, I encourage you guys to take some notes. If you guys write it down, you'll, you'll actually retain more of the information that I'm sharing. And then take this information and get some dialogue going with the people that you care about, friends and family and so forth. So as we start moving through this, the first thing I want you to write down is there are three legs to a triangle of optimal health. If you really want to have better health, we've got to get all three pieces of this puzzle. Okay? It's diet, exercise, and supplementation. I really believe with all of my heart when it comes to weight loss goals, diet is most important. I do think that exercise is crucial, very important. And then lastly, I also believe that supplementation plays a role in this. So really to get all three of these right, this is what we're going to shoot for. Let's start with nutrients, okay? Back to your high school biology class here. There are three types of micronutrients. Micro meaning there's no calories associated with it, okay? Water, vitamins, and minerals. These are the micronutrients. And then there are three types of macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. A lot of people think fats are bad. Quite the opposite, friend. Fats are very good and very crucial for your diet. Avocados, walnuts, cashews, these types of fatty sources, uh, olive oil, really good for you. Carbohydrates, confusing for most people. You know, most people think carbs are bad, but usually the carbohydrates that we think about are those, are those bad carbohydrate sources. Some of the white flour, some of those starches. We want to talk through what good carbohydrates look like. And then proteins. You know, are proteins necessary? How much protein should I actually be shooting for? So let's, let's talk proteins for a minute here. I want you to write down that there are actually various uh, forms of protein, but let's, let's write down the best forms of protein, okay? Your nuts and vegetable sources are actually your cleanest, purest form of protein. Nuts and vegetable sources was where you should go first. Number two is you should go to cold water fish, like mackerel. Cold water fish is your second best source of protein. Your third best source of protein is actually bird, fowl. Uh, the fat does not get marbled into the meat, so that's why you can remove that skin on that chicken. You can take that skin off, take the fat off, and you can get a nice lean cut of meat. Uh, you can do so with turkey as well. And then your last source of protein should always be red meat and dairy. That should be your limited source of protein. So in that order, that's kind of what we want to shoot for. Now, depending upon what your goals are, that will determine how much protein we want to intake. But they say about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight for the average person. So that, for a typical person, that's about 65 to 80 grams of protein a day. 
And we really want to make sure that we're spreading that out. So those are just some key points as we start thinking about the nutrients that our bodies need. Okay, I want you to shift your focus here for a minute, and I want you guys to think just for a minute about carbohydrates. Okay, what are the bad sources of carbohydrates? You know, we think pizza, we think pasta, we think white rice. We start thinking about carbs. Most people are taught that carbs are bad. Well, I believe personally that God created carbohydrates. And if you think about it, the best rule of thumb is, is if it's grown in the ground, it's probably good for you. I don't know about you, but I don't think uh, that I've ever seen a donut bush before. You know, a donut bush is obviously man-made in a sense. That's just kind of a simple way of thinking about it. If it's grown in the ground, it's good for you. If it's made by man, it should be a limited source that you eat. Limited, meaning it's a celebration item. So let's just talk carbohydrates here for a minute. Carbs means sugar. When we start thinking about sugar, there's good sugar and there's bad sugar. Okay? A good source of sugar is typically going to be higher in fiber. And your body's ability to break it down into the usable form of energy, which is called glucose, should be a slow process, a complex process. So let's look at this red line here, okay? You see this red line, and with this red line, that's your high blood sugar. And then as we start thinking about the green line, that's low blood sugar or a good, good source of carbohydrates. So red is bad, green is good. So let's, let's just come up with an example here. As we start thinking about a bad source of carbohydrates, okay, I'm just going to use the example of donuts. When we consume donuts, our body's ability to break that down into the usable form of energy, glucose, is a very quick process. This is why our blood sugar spikes. And when our blood sugar levels spike, okay, our body is going to naturally respond by increasing this hormone called insulin. And insulin's job is to take us from that high blood sugar range and bring us back down into those normal blood sugar ranges. Unfortunately, what goes up must come down. And so what happens is our blood sugar plummets down into this low blood sugar section. And low blood sugar section means that we need to really kind of alert the brain. Signals are sent and red alert, your blood sugar is super low. So what happens is your body's going to now release adrenaline and cortisol which are low blood sugar hormones, which causes us to have this uncontrollable hunger. Now, men and women both, I mean, what's it like when that blood sugar is super low? Man, we're like pawing around the kitchen looking for something to eat. So the average American, their blood sugar spikes up and then their blood sugar spikes down and most people are up and down. But really, we were never intended to be in that high or low blood sugar range. We were meant to be in that green range, which is that healthy range of 80 to 120. So what do we got to do? What we need to do is we need to understand, first and foremost, that the hormonal responses to blood sugar is actually what's causing the majority of our problems. Insulin, write this down, insulin is a fat storage hormone. Okay, Blood sugar is not the problem. Insulin is the problem. Insulin, when it is spiked, I tell people, blood sugar comes down like a kid down the slide. But insulin is like grandma coming down the slide. It comes down super slow. Once insulin is spiked, it really stays elevated. And what insulin is, is it's a fat storage hormone. So you're going you're gonna to gain weight, and you're going to cause an intense amount of free radical damage, or what we call inflammation. When we go into that low blood sugar range, adrenaline and cortisol also cause damage. These are, these are stress hormones. So we tend to overeat, we feel tired and weak, forgetful, mental fogginess, and this is where that uncontrollable hunger starts to kick in. So what we need to do is we need to eat foods that are considered good carbs are slow releasing, like fruits, vegetables, things grown in the ground. So what's the application of this? The application of this would be the glycemic index. Okay? You can Google the glycemic index. You guys can download apps on your phone, the glycemic index counters. But the glycemic index takes into consideration your body's ability to take a carbohydrate and turn it into glucose. So this is carbohydrate specific. When you start looking at low glycemic foods, this healthy range that's below 55, this is a scale of 0 to 100, anything below 55 would be considered low GI, which are good carbs. Anything above 70 would be considered a bad carb or a high glycemic food. Now, Look at some of the good carbs like apples and yams and barley and cherry. I mean, these are low glycemic foods. 
That means it's, it's a very complex process for your body to break it down into glucose. But look at pretzels. Pretzels are an 83 on the glycemic index. That's like sticking an IV in your, in your arm and giving yourself straight glucose. Now, where it's confusing for people is people think pretzels are low fat, low calorie. You know, 70, 70 calories in a bag of pretzels. So you think that you're doing yourself a favor, but what's the problem? The problem with pretzels is not that it's low calorie. The problem is, is that you're giving yourself straight glucose. 83 on the glycemic index is almost identical to flour, which would be 100 on the glycemic index. So what happens is when you consume those pretzels, regardless of whether you consider you consume a lot or a little, your body's insulin levels are going to spike. When that insulin is spiking, remember what we said insulin is. It's a fat storage hormone. So every time you consume a pretzel, you are sending that insulin through the roof, and now your body is storing fat as opposed to using it properly. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure that our high glycemic foods are celebration foods. I'm not saying you can't eat these. I'm just saying they should not be your staple foods. Your staple foods need to be low glycemic. And again, it goes back down to what I just said. I believe God put fruits and vegetables in the ground for a reason. These are healthy carbohydrate sources. Okay, so what we need to do is eat low glycemic. And there are some ways that we can do this effectively. Okay, now a little tip here. If you add a protein or a fat source to a carbohydrate, what you're doing effectively is you are, you are keeping your body from breaking down the carbohydrates simply. In other words, if you eat a bagel with natural peanut butter, your body has to break down the bagel and it has to break down the protein fat source. So I tell people as best you can, whether you're cooking snacks or meals, you want to always make sure that there's a balance of proteins, fats, and carbs. Effectively, that's why the zone diet was so good. I like that there's balance, okay? Now, the company called USANA that I'm going to tell you about here in a minute really understood this. And realizing when people are making food choices, this is the order of importance for people when making a food choice. Number one is convenience. Number two is cost. Number three is taste. And in last place is health. So whether you're choosing breakfast, lunch, or dinner, this is the order of importance to most Americans. So this company, USANA, that I've decided to partner with, that I've, that I've been representing proudly for the last eight years, has come up with some solutions to help people get a convenient, cost-effective, tasty, and healthy alternative to some of the foods that are out there. So if you look at some of the traditional foods, I mean cornflakes and bagels and a lot of the muffins out there, you're seeing high glycemic snacks. USANA has formulated some food products that are a 43, a 23, a 36 in the glycemic index. So what you're doing is you're giving your body a density of nutrients. So I tell people, this is not some sort of restriction of calories. This isn't a restriction of carbs or a restriction of proteins. What you're doing is, effectively, you're giving yourself the perfect balance of healthy carbs, proteins, fats, and fiber. So what you're doing here is you're giving your body, you're giving your cells the nutrients that it needs, but you're not spiking insulin, you're not spiking adrenaline, you're not spiking cortisol. You're really controlling those hormonal levels. So one program that I do for people is I like to do the reset. Now why the reset? I cannot tell you guys how many times I have worked with individuals. I have developed meal plans and exercise programs. I've laid it out as simple as it can be laid out, and people still don't follow the meal plans. I just realized, I was like, man, I got busy moms running kids around to school. I've got dads that are, you know, working jobs, full-time jobs. I got students that are taking 18 credit hours. And the reality is we're all busy people. So what the reset program is, is it's a five-day program where we're trying to reset insulin levels. We're trying to detox the system. So what we do is we put a five-day program that's easy and convenient to follow, but it produces results. So how this five-day reset kit works is you do one shake followed by a bar. For lunch, you do another shake followed by a bar, and then you do a dinner shake. So for five days, you're doing shakes and bars. Somewhere spread throughout that day, you will add a serving of fruit and a serving of vegetables. So what happens over five days is what we do is we reset the body. We reset the insulin levels, and never do you move into high blood sugar or low blood sugar range. Now, people say, is this a weight loss kit, Jordan? 
Effectively what it is, I tell people, it's a healthy meal replacement program, but when you give your body the right nutrients, a side effect will be weight loss if you need to lose weight. So I tell people, healthy weight loss is a side effect, okay? Now once you've done the five-day program, you can move into what we call transform phase. Transform phase is one shake, one bar, one shake, and then you have to start to implement low glycemic snacks, low glycemic meals, fresh fruits and vegetables on your own. Some education has to start taking place here. Once you've reached a target weight, maybe it takes two weeks, two months, maybe it takes six months, depending upon what your weight loss goals are, then we move into that maintain phase. And the maintain phase is just one shake and one bar a day out of convenience. And then again, learning the art of eating low glycemic for the remainder of your meals, okay? It's a very effective program, and really what it is, it's a lifestyle modification. I've had dozens of clients lose anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds, but the average person loses at least four and a half pounds, at least through this reset program. So you'll see some tremendous results. And again, whether your goal is just small, just resetting your insulin levels, or it's losing 50 to 100 pounds, the possibilities are there. Okay, so just a couple of quick tips on this Nutrameal. These are shakes that provide a quality balance of proteins, fiber. I don't want you to think again of these as protein shakes. These are well-balanced meal replacements. Eight grams of dietary fiber, 15 grams of either soy, whey, or other proteins, and you'll see that there are a variety of different options. I love this whey-based option, especially for you athletes, for you fitness uh, figure competitors. Most of you guys are looking for whey-based options that exists. Some of you guys that are vegan, this is a vegan-friendly option, so you'll find 15 grams of protein, it's 220 calories, 7 grams of healthy fat, fructose-free, soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. So this is a vegetarian-friendly option called our Nutrimeal Free. If you talk to the person that invited you to this webinar, you'll see that you guys can access some amazing Nutrimeal recipes. So you can add some healthy ingredients to kind of doctor up your shakes and make them taste even a little bit better. Our nutrition bars, again, healthy snacks. You'll find that this has proteins, it's got fats, it's got carbs, it's a healthy snack. It's not just a carb source, it's not just a protein source. You've really got to make sure that there's a balance there. Now I wanted to give you guys a little bit of education on what your alternative meals should look like. And I've worked with a, a, a girl named Paige that, that's in my group and she's amazing. She's, she's a certified nutritionist, she went through integrative uh, Institute, uh, Institute of Integrative Nutrition, and I've asked her to, to kind of help me put together just a couple of ideas, samplings of what you should be cooking for those alternative meals. So if you're looking for a healthy breakfast, you know, these would be some examples of what you might cook for breakfast. A Nutrimeal shake, maybe avocado on a toasted Ezekiel bread, steel-cut oats with a tablespoon of, of almond butter, cinnamon, and a teaspoon of honey plus an apple or two scrambled eggs and grounded turkey sausage. What you'll notice here is you're getting a good source of proteins, fats, and carbs. You want balanced meals. Okay, what about lunch? A Nutrimeal shake is obviously an option. Maybe spinach and vegetable salad topped with any of the following, chicken, baked turkey, seeds, nuts, fresh fruit. Maybe a protein-style sandwich. You'll see uh, homemade chicken lettuce wraps. But you'll notice that all of these options have a balance of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. What about dinner? Maybe dinner would look something like this, a paleo chicken tortilla soup topped with avocado. Why are we throwing in avocado? Because avocado is a great fat source. A balsamic chicken and roasted bacon, Brussels sprouts, or another vegetable. Maybe homemade chicken lettuce wraps for dinner. Stuffed sweet potato stuffed with shredded spiced chicken and sautéed onions and bell peppers. A barbecued chicken, steak, and vegetable kebabs with pineapple. These are all amazing food options. And what happens is, is you stop being afraid of food. You stop counting your calories if you start learning how to cook correctly. If you start learning the right foods that are low glycemic, what happens is you empower yourself to actually love and enjoy and look forward to food as opposed to feeling bad about yourself or being afraid to eat or being afraid to consume a, too many calories. I just talked to a person this week. She was a precious woman, unbelievable, such a sweet spirit, and she was afraid to eat avocados because she thought they were too fatty or afraid to eat certain sources of foods. I want to empower you guys just to remember 
if it's low glycemic and it's growing in the ground, it's growing in the earth, it's going to be a really good option for you. Okay. Now, what about snacks? An apple and an ounce of cheese. Notice you're getting a carb source, protein, and fat. Maybe 7 to 12 unsalted nuts of choice. If you really want to do it right, you'd soak those nuts in water. A piece of fresh fruit, so you're getting some carbs as well. A hard-boiled egg uh, and an apple. I believe the egg is actually probably the most complete balance. Um, meal or snack that you can get. Five to seven low glycemic crackers with some hummus, maybe a couple of ounces of cheese, a raw veggies and some hummus. So these are all great snack options if you're looking for ways to, to cook and to eat better. Okay? Now let's kind of change gears here and I want to talk about exercise for a moment. Okay? There's a lot that you can teach about exercise, but exercise is super important. Here's just a couple of rules that I want you to write down. You want to exercise more days in the week than days that you don't. So with a seven-day week, we want to exercise at least four days if you're going to take three days off. Even better would be five or six days of exercise. And you want to make sure that you're exercising a minimum of 20, day, or 20 minutes daily. Sometimes people will say, well, Jordan, I'm going to work out twice a week, but I'm going to work out for an hour and a half. No. What would be better is if you're going to start slow, Work out four, five, six days a week, but only work out for 20 minutes. More is better than just working two days and just trying to go gung-ho with a 90-minute workout. Okay? A little bit every day is much better. If you want some simple things that you can do at home, I would recommend getting resistance band, getting some dumbbells, and grabbing some uh, medicine ball. You can really get a complete workout with just resistance bands, dumbbells, and a medicine ball. But what's happening is here is we want to add resistance to all of the movements. So, for example, if you're walking down the street and you're just going to go for a 20-minute walk, walk with dumbbells, okay? Do some shoulder raises as you're walking. You know, as you're doing some core activities, hold that medicine ball. Flip over into a plank position. Put the dumbbells on your back. Put the medicine ball on your back. You know, there's really simple things that you can do, but what you want to be thinking about is all functional movements. A lot of guys I see, they're squatting and they're bench pressing and they're doing things that really don't simulate activities that you would do in life. So if you think about it, if you're swinging a golf club or if you're swinging a tennis racket or, or you're pounding a hammer, those are complex movements that we use in everyday life. You want to simulate that when you're in the gym. So what's happening is your lower body is turning on your hips, turning on your upper body. So there's three planes of motion, X, Y, and Z. So you want to make sure that you're really engaging all of those different planes of motion when you're doing functional movement. I'm very, very leery of some of those, those the CrossFit and some of these, these movements that I think people are doing that are uneducated and they're not being coached correctly. You need to be careful of some of those movements that are really in the X and Y position. You really want to make sure that you're doing functional movement. Now, whichever direction you decide to go, what happens is when you're increasing your heart rate, we are going to build muscle mass, and as we build muscle mass, we raise our metabolic rate, and by raising our metabolic rate, we actually burn fat. So let's go back to our example of walking for 20 minutes, okay? If you're walking for three or four minutes and then you jog for 20 seconds, you're going to raise your heart rate. If you walk for a couple of minutes and then let's say you move into more of a sprint, okay, you raise your heart rate. Our goal throughout exercise is to keep that heart rate elevated. As much as possible, we want to raise our heart rate and we want, to, we want to seek to increase our muscle mass, our lean body mass, okay? So I really recommend push-ups. I recommend body squats. I recommend complex movements where we're trying to engage our muscles, increase that muscle mass, raise our metabolic rate, in which case we'll start burning more of that fat, okay? Mayo Clinic says that there's some incredible health benefits Okay, you guys can see these are seven benefits that Mayo Clinic says exist just from um, working out, just from exercise. Exercise controls weight, it combats health conditions and diseases, it improves our overall mood, it boosts our energy. You guys can see that these are simple things that, that, that exercise does for us. It even puts a spark back in your sex life. Now, some of you guys have a sex life. Congratulations, good for you guys. Mine's coming soon. But the reality is this, I want you guys to realize that exercise really does have some massive benefits for us, okay? Now, some people think that supplementation doesn't really affect weight loss or doesn't affect healthy weight. It does. 
Here's a study right here. It shows that supplementation, even with calcium and vitamin D, decreases central obesity, enhances heart health benefits in overweight adults. Okay? They've actually shown that vitamins and minerals actually make our bodies more sensitive to insulin. So what happens is if we can get those cells functioning optimally, and we can get that density of nutrients into our cells, what happens is the overall body starts to become more effective. If that digestive system is working properly, if the cardiovascular system is working properly, this will assist us in our overall health and, and wellness goals. So a lot of people think, well, Jordan, I'm just going to change my diet and change my exercise. That's terrific. That's a really good start. But if we can start to give our body the supplementation, the nutrients that we need from a micronutrient standpoint, you will actually more effectively reach your goals, reach your results. Okay? So supplementation is also uh, essential to that. I love the fact that the professional Olympic athletes like to trust USANA products using the micronutrients, using the macronutrients. There are over 600 plus world-class athletes that choose to trust USANA. And, and some of the reasons for that, I like the fact that USANA's products are all pharmaceutical grade. They're made in a FDA drug established facility. So a lot of athletes are fearful of banned substances. So just seeing the world-class athletes who know how to keep their bodies in that prime shape are using these products. That stood out to me. And we're the official health supplement supplier of many of the top athletes and Olympic uh, programs that many of you guys are familiar with, including the Women's Tennis Association, the USA Ski Team, the USA Snowboarding Team. I tell people, if athletes trust this company, there's got to be something to it. And the fact that USANA is not monetarily endorsing these athletes, to me, is just proof that these athletes really know that these products can and will work. Okay? I hope that this has been helpful.